Good morning, Math 8. Welcome to day two of exponents and stuff like that. I've noticed that most of us are doing a really good job on our squares and cubes, doing out all that math. It's going excellent and remembering what that exponent does. It's not a multiplication problem. It's not 10 times 3. It's 10 to the third power. Which means it's 10 times 10 times 10. There's three tens being multiplied together. So we call it expanded form. It means it makes it bigger if we just write out 10 times 10 times 10. It's expanded. It looks bigger. And we're going to see how this can actually help us discover some rules about exponents that we can use pretty easily that'll make it easier to deal with larger exponents and larger quantities. And expanded form is going to help us to do that. And then standard form, again, is just what does it equal? Like, what is the value of that number? So 10 cubed, or 10 times 10 times 10, as you know, is 1,000. All right, so let's get started. So the first part is just a little visual warm-up. You have this grid of boxes. And just looking at that grid, you want to see, think to yourself first, where do you see 100? Where do you see 10? Where do you see 1? Where do you see 1 tenth? Where can you see 1 one hundredth? And then, so where would you see those five things in that grid? And then, what would a thousand look like? And what would 1 one thousandth look like if you could see that on the grid? So take a few minutes, pause it, think where would you see all of these on that grid up there? Okay, so I see 100 as, let's see, this whole box is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 wide, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tall. So 100 is like the whole entire thing. I'm just highlighting it just with this terrible highlighter. I left it uncapped for the entirety of April vacation, so it's kind of on its last leg. Um, so the whole thing is kind of 100, and that looks awful, but that's okay. The entire grid represents a hundred blocks. All right. So now where can I see 10? Where does 10 appear? Well, I see 10 as one row or one column. I'll just stick one column for now. I see this 10 as one column. And now where do I see one? Where is one right here? Well, I see one as just this. There's one little block, it's one. So I have one block, I have 10 blocks, and then I have 100 blocks in yellow. So now I want to think about where do I see one tenth? So where is one tenth here? And that's a good thing to think about. Because there's a couple different places we could see one tenth. One option is I could think of like, well, one out of these ten, that's one tenth. That block right there is one out of ten. If the pink is my 10. Or I could also think about 1 tenth. One block out of a row of 10. Or I could also think of 1 tenth as maybe if I have one block and I was to cut that into like 10 blocks, like I. Dear Neptune, this will be interesting. Okay, let's see, that's two, six, eight, ten. So it could be like one block, one tenth of one block. That might be one tenth as well. Or maybe you could even think about one row 
one row is one tenth of the grid because there's one row. This is one row out of 10. So we can see that one tenth in all sorts of different places. And you do the same kind of arguments for where do I see one one hundredth? So one one hundredth, I could think, well, my one block could be one out of 10, but it could also be one out of the whole 100. One out of the 100 blocks in that grid. Or I could even like take a block, and I'm not gonna do this either, but I could take a block and I could split it into little pieces. I'll just do a little dot there. And I could say that could be one one hundredth of a block. Here's a nice visual exercise. What would a thousand look like? Well, in my eyes, I think a thousand would look like 10 of these grids. All right, we have 10 of those, so that's a, th that's a hundred. A thousand would be if I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these grids. So that'd be a, uh, just adds one zero, but man, that makes it a whole lot bigger, doesn't it? And what would one one thousandth look like? Well, that one one thousandth could be one block out of the ten grids. So of all 10 of those 100 grids, it should be just one block out of it. Or I could say it'd be one, another thing was one tenth of the one one hundredth piece, that little speck that's one one hundredth. It could be one tenth of that. So we see that even just dealing with 10, 100, 1,000, and hundredths and thousandths, we're dealing with super huge amounts and really, really, really small amounts. So we're looking to see how, just how small and large numbers can be represented by exponents. And you'll see that it doesn't even take large or super small exponents to get these really small and really large numbers. All right, so we're gonna look at the power of 10 today specifically. Okay, so before we even get to the problem here, I wanna look at the title. The title is Picture a Power of 10. We're gonna be looking all about powers of 10 and powers in general. And when you see the phrase a power of 10, that means it's an exponent with base 10. Which means 10 to some power. So like 10 squared or 10 to the fifth power. So it's Basically, we'll see what all these powers of 10 look like. But we have 10 times 10. Or this could be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So those are powers of 10. Like that would be 100. And let's see, 10 times 10 is 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. So these are powers of 10, 100 and 100,000. So we're gonna see what these look like in exponents and how we can do math with these numbers today. So in the diagram, the medium rectangle, so that one, is made up of 10 small squares. The large square is made up of 10 medium rectangles. All right, so how can I represent the large square as a power of 10? So think about how 10 with some exponent could represent the big square. So I was thinking along the lines of, well, this large square is 10 rows or 10 sets of these columns of 10. So it's 10 by 10 or 10 tens, which would really be 10 squared. All right. So that's how I could represent that one. And that 10 by 10 looks like 10 squared. So then if each small square, let's think about a different situation. If each small square represents 10 squared, then what does this represent? Think about that one as well. So I just started writing in, if each small square is 10 squared, then that means this medium rectangle, how many 10 squares are there? Well, we've really got 
10, 10 squares. So how much is it worth? Well, 10 squared we really know is equal to how much? It's 100. 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So 10 times 10 squared plus 10 times 100. Ten times one hundred is one thousand. So it'd be worth one thousand. Or I could try a different way. Let's try writing it in expanded form. We could say, well, all right. So we have ten squared. We have ten ten squareds. So we have ten times ten squared. So really, that ten squared could be broken up into ten times, and then. 10 times, then 10 times 10. And really, this is how many tens. I have one, two, three tens, which gives me 10 cubed. So the medium square represents 10 cubed, or 1,000. Let's think about the large square. If the medium square is 10 cubed, what do we think the large square is gonna be worth? If each of these boxes is 10 squared, how much is the whole thing gonna be worth? Or if you think about if each of these columns is worth 10 cubed, how much will the whole thing be worth? Well, let's think about it. We know that there are, if each little box is 10 squared, How many little boxes are in the whole thing? A hundred. So 10 squared is 100 times 100 is 10,000. Or let's think about it like this. 10 cubed is one column, and there's how many of those? There are 10 columns. So 10 cubed times 10 gives me 10,000. Or, what's 10 cubed? 10 cubed is really 10 times 10 times 10. So really I have one, two, three, four tens. Which is 10 to the fourth power. All right. So a lot of our math today that we're trying to learn is just getting used to what the power of 10 looks like. Just getting used to talking about hundreds and thousands as powers of 10. And we're going to see what math we can do with those and how we can sort of take stuff like this and arrive at this answer without necessarily going to expand it more. We're going to look for shortcuts. All right? Because let's notice something here. This pink problem right here. We took 10 cubed and did 10 times 10 times 10, and then multiplied it by 10. And how many tens did we end up with? We ended up with four tens, or 10,000. Mm -hmm. And here we had a 10 times 10 squared, or 10 times 10 times 10. So we ended up with three tens all being multiplied. And by the way, what's the implied exponent here? What exponent does this 10 have to have? It's one. Any number without an exponent is an exponent of one. You can assume it has an exponent of one. It's an implied exponent of one. Which means we don't write it, but it's always there. It's like when x, if there's no number before the x, there's just one x. It's implied, you don't have to write it. All right, it's just like that. Okay, so let's try a couple more of these. If the medium rectangle is 10 to the fifth, then what does the large square represent? I'll just sketch this out real quick. So if that right there is 10 to the fifth, what is the large square now worth?
Well, how many of these fit into that? Again, there's 10. There's 10 mediums in a large. If only McDonald's worked the same way, right? There's 10 mediums in a large. So, how does this fit into this? Well, how many 10 to the fifths are there? There's 10. So let's see how many tens do we have total? We have one, two, three, four, five tens. Ten times. Sorry, the phone closed. So we have one, two, three, four, five tens right here, and then times that other ten. This expanded to turn into this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six tens total. So we have ten to the sixth power. So multiplying by 10 is really just increasing that power of 10 by 1. All right? Which doesn't seem like a huge deal, but let's think about these numbers. If I do 10 to the fifth power, if I did 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that would really get me... Well, let's think. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, times 10 is 100,000. That's the difference between 100,000 people and a million people. Which again, if you can help comparing, uh, there's a few cities in Connecticut that have 100,000 people in them, like Waterbury is pretty close to 100,000 people, Stamford, some big places like that. Um, the, if you combine Meriden and Wallingford, for that's about 100,000 people. A million people, that you'd have to go, well, there's only a few cities in the US that have a million people. Uh, New York City has several million. So like just the scale in those numbers is so different. Like our two little towns of Meriden and Wallingford are here, but like this is on a scale of like huge thriving cities. So it's just one power of 10 that separates them, but it's a huge degree of people. And then if you added one more power of 10, you got to 10 million, there's like almost no cities that have that many people in it, if any at all. All right, so just like showing you the comparison between how these powers of 10s get so big so fast. I mean, like, 10 squared was only a mere 100. And then once you put the exponent up to 5, you're at 100,000. All right. So let's skip number 4. I don't feel like doing that right now. The video's getting long anyway. we got one more thing to sort of look at. And then we'd be done. So we are looking at patterns we notice when multiplying powers of 10. So this I want you to try on your own. We're going to multiply powers of 10 by expanding it out. So here we did 10 squared times 10 cubed, and we expanded it. We did 10 squared, and then 10 cubed was 10, 10, and 10. And then we multiplied them all together. It's really just 5 tens being multiplied together, so it's just 10 to the fifth. So I want you to try to expand this. See what you get. Expand this. How many tens do you have? Expand this, see how many tens do you have? This, well, what's the exponent here? You want to write out that expression over there. What would you put there? And try to expand out this one as well and see what you get. And then try to expand out this one and see what you get. And we'll have how many, uh, what's your power of 10 here? We all need powers of 10 in all these cases, the resulting power of 10. And I'll say there is one box I'd say you're allowed to leave blank. You may leave one block box blank. And there's going to be a good reason to leave it blank. And we'll think about that in just a minute. All right? So pause it. Give it a try on your task statements. All right, so hopefully the expanding wasn't too bad. We expanded 10 to the fourth to turn into 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And 10 cubed to be 10 times 10 times 10. And this is really just a product of multiplying 10 together seven times. So we got 10 to the seventh. Here, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fourth. We ended up with eight tens. Here, 10 to the third and 10 to the fifth also ended up with eight tens. Here, 10 squared and 10 to the seventh ended up with nine total tens. And unless you're supreme champion of the classroom, you want to skip this box and want to write out eight tens and 23 tens and I can sort of figure out well if I write out 18 tens and 23 tens how many total tens would there be well 
if you add them together, you would get 41 tenths. That would be 10 to the 41th power. I'm sorry, 10 to the 41st power. 41th, good grief. All right. So that's going to be the first sort of lesson we learned, that if we expand these things out, we can see... Hold on a second. I don't have to actually do that. If I have to multiply like 10 squared by 10 cubed or 100 by 1,000, I can just sort of add my exponents. 2 and 3 makes 5 total 10s being multiplied. So it's 10 to the 5th or 100,000. All right. So if we have 10 to the n down below times 10 to the m, any two numbers, I don't know what they are, I can let that be 10 to the n plus m power. I just add the exponents. All right. And we'll talk about something like part b a teensy bit later. Um, and question five down here will just be part of our exit slip. All right, so this will be in our exit slip. So if you get it wrong on the, I didn't watch the video all the way to the end. So the state of Georgia has 10 to the seventh human residents, and each human has roughly 10 to the 13th bacteria cells in his or her digestive tract. That's pretty gross, but whatever. Uh, that's just, that's a good bacteria, don't worry. So if each of these people has 10 to the 13th bacteria cells, we want to think about how many bacteria cells are there in total. Well, let's think about something different. Let's think about, like, let's say there were four people in Georgia. All right, let's say there were four people. And each resident had two cats. How many total cats would there be? Well, if each of these four people, each of them has two cats, how many total cats? There was four groups of two. It's four times two would be eight cats. All right, so we're gonna wanna multiply here, 10 to the seventh times 10 to the 13th. That many people, they each have that many bacteria cells in their digestive tract, which would be 10 to the, what's the, seven plus 13 is 20. So it's 10 to the 20th power bacteria cells. All right, so hopefully your exit goes pretty well. Uh, good luck.